and the district manager report. Sure. Um, so today, spent probably about six hours with representatives from FEMA, Homeland Security, and Cal OBS. There's four people in total. We visited all uh, <coughs> one, two, three, four, five sites that we had listed on our claim. Uh, we literally walked out of Pawnee. Uh, Chief drove him up Queenstone Fire Road, went over to the uh, slide at the Idleberry Trail. How far up? It took the mule. We went up about a, a little over a mile. So you hit the big red. Oh, yeah. In fact, one of the ladies got so scared she got out and walked. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, and then both the sites here on the creek. Um, well, you know, it was a fine meeting and it went good and they went through and took a lot of documentation and a lot of pictures. It is you know, much as Irv alluded to at the very beginning, a process. Um, they will start creating their reports. Those reports will go up the ladder to their organizations. Eventually they will get to me for a review and comment, uh, at which point they will be sent back, and then at which point somebody will make an eligibility determination on each of the sites. Did they give you any no. estimated time no. of no. any of the arrival? I felt like huge bureaucracy was in play. Uh, yeah, it, they, uh, you know, these were just, again, inspectors and people coming out. They made several mentions to how uh, the process has changed over the last year and uh, everybody's getting used to it and it seemed like it was a much more streamlined process in the past and uh, so on and so forth. So it, uh, it uh, you know, it's where we're at. I'm waiting on those reports then so we can find out which of these sites are eligible in terms of uh, the work back here it did give us a good chance to kind of get back out, see where some of these things are. Um, the two creek locations seem to be holding actually incredibly well. Um, as they went through there, I reached out to another engineering group called A3 Geo. Um, they are a geological, geotechnical engineering group out of the East Bay to see if they would have an interest. I'm waiting to hear back from them to come out and run the geotech studies that we would need done so that way we can go out to a civil engineer and work on a fix, um, primarily for the one behind the pool house here. A fix to be done before the next rainy season or not? Um, I don't know if we're going to be able to move it that fast. What's, um, so we'll be asking them of the risk of having a repeat of last winter without doing anything. Would that be a true statement? Um, well, I mean, the way I mean, they look at it is this is a reimbursement program anyway. I it's understand. It's a that. matter of the studies, the designs, the permitting, mm -hmm. everything else. It's going to be out of pocket, I understand. Yeah, that. correct. You know, for a period of time. Correct. My point is this. I'd rather pay out of pocket for the fix than pay out of pocket to lift the pool back up, or the pool house back up from the creek. Sure. Sure. Okay. So, I mean, if we have another winter like we had last year, is anyone able to say, you know what, you're at risk? You need to do something now. That's exactly why we're trying to have these geotechnical yeah, firms come out and do the earth studies. I've been waiting on that. Basically, I'm walking away from the North Pacific at this point in time because uh, even after my reach outs and them saying, yes, I'll have somebody next week, and then I also have other uh, highly noted uh, you know, Rachel Kamen, who's a local hydrology engineer, basically uh, had followed up with me on where we're at. She said, look, if you can wait for Miller Pacific, wait for them, they're really good. And I basically said, yeah, I'm done waiting. So now we're reaching out to some of these other firms and we're going to bring them out. Everybody recommended Miller Pacific. They're too slammed and this is just a job they obviously are incredibly interested in performing yeah. for us. Okay. Um, you, may, uh, you mentioned you uh, keep track of the expenses and yes. the mm -hmm. uh, What's the rough estimate of uh, what we're out of pocket right now? Oh, very little. Uh, very little. Nobody, you know, again, I'm waiting on a proposal for them to perform the study. So when they've come out and visited the sites, they haven't done anything. We have some supplies that we've done, you know, building the fence, some, uh, okay, so some force account labor, things along those lines. But uh, uh, I can't give you an exact total. I can tell you it's, it's minimal. Okay. With Miller Pacific as slammed as they are because of the storms, the contractors are all equally slammed. And even if we got plans ready to go in the next couple of weeks, there's no guarantee we're going to get anybody available or get a price that's reasonable. So that's a bit of a gamble. I know in years back I worked on an emergency project for county parks or an open space. And uh, the clock starts running, I think, 
when the declaration of emergency is declared. And then the, in the case of this open space project, they took so long to get the wheels going from a federal and state level. By the time the county was ready to go, sorry, the money's too late, it expired. You're out of the program. It's, it's 18 months. There are certainly uh, extensions available as well. They're real good at uh, saying sorry. Right. Sometimes you're better off, if there was the money, I don't know if there is, gambling and, and moving on with the work without all the approvals so that you can get it done. If, if that pool structure is that critical, and I believe it is, I think we need to at least look at that possibility. Trying to get a geotech out as quick as we can. I mean, that's kind of what, that's the first step, and that's what any of the engineering groups have said is you need to run a geotechnical report on this, and uh, finding somebody to come out and do it has been a challenge. I'm open to more companies, or if you want to send me some more, uh, I will blast this thing out to everybody. Any other comments? Open to the public, excuse me. Yeah, um, I think Jeff made a really excellent point that we don't want to be uh, dealing with a second disaster. I'm wondering uh, if there should be planning right now to an emergency shoring up, I don't know, you know, like there was a pending storm with sandbags and, and uh, uh, timber uh, to just in the event that we do have a bad uh, uh, situation. Uh, maybe we can. There's no reason why we should have this risk extended indefinitely. We can at least mitigate it. Um, and uh, so I guess what I'm saying is just contingency planning would be appropriate right now. Thank you. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. The pool, the pool pump house goes recreation program for right down the drain, don't they? I mean, the pool's a, a huge cornerstone of our recreation programs, is it not? It would be a huge loss, yeah. yeah. That would be catastrophic. Right. I mean, we're talking about chlorine in the creek. Everything. Yeah. Environmental. Forget it. Revenues. That can't happen. It's fish would do it. We might have to oh, shut yeah. down the horseshoe pit. It's downwind. This will be bad. Pay attention. This will be bad. Any other comments from the public? May I? When, you know, Stephen's suggesting that we have some stopgap measure ready to go. The kind of repair that that may take is taking a very large crane and parking on the edge of Lucas Valley Road and reaching over the top of the trees and drilling some holes and putting some large steel, steel beams in vertically and then either timber or concrete between those beams. It's a, I think it's going to be a relatively huge project. And, to, and I don't think you can even start to think about how to do anything about it until you get that geotechnical report. Right. Okay. Well, okay. I, I it isn't in the magnitude of sandbags and, and a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I, 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 I defer to you. I, 